Huh. Are we live? Are we here? Is it happening? <laughs> oh no, oh no. Do we need to edit something out already? <laughs> I think we do. I think we need to edit something out already. Oh man. Oh man. It's fine. We're live on Facebook. We are live. We are there. Ah. We are. Hooray. Hooray. People, We're live. Oh, look, it's us. That's us. That is so meta. Oh, I love it. I can't see it. So you have to tell me if I'm doing something stupid, okay? I got too many other things running right now. <laughs> too many other things. It's okay. I'm watching and judging. Good. I'm glad you're watching because I'm not watching. I we can't have watch. Richard already in the comments on Steam Yard. That is great. I love it. <laughs> I do. I love it. Hi, Colin, as well. Oh, hooray. Oh, look people, again. It's, people. it's only your friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's because it's Memorial Day in America. So you're all having like the barbecues and stuff. Well, yeah, but that's, I mean, that's not really what Memorial Day is about, but that's just what people do. So, yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Oh, anyway. John's in the audience. Hello, John. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy that all your friends get to watch them live. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take what we can get. <laughs> yeah, we'll really, take it. We'll take what we can get. Oh, cool. And the sirens are starting already. Yay. That is not something that, that I missed while I was away. We need to be authentic. We need to be authentic. <laughs> We can't edit this out. Nope, can't. Can't do it. Oh my gosh. It's a really good one as well. I forgot how much I hated it here. <laughs> <laughs> You've only been gone 10 days. Oh, I know. I know. Okay. We're doing the usual thing that we do when we record. Cry? Not, cry. 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 Complain about sirens and like go off topic. Hey, it's normal. It's totally normal. <laughs> Everything is normal. Everything is good. Everything is fine. Are you ready to begin? No, but I have no choice in the matter. All right. <laughs> in this extra special live episode of Fictional Hangover, we're discussing the short story, The Girl and the Machine by Beth Revis. Hey everybody, welcome to this live episode of Fictional Hangover, a podcast about young adult and new adult books, series, authors, and voice actors that is full of spoilers. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire. And today we're going to discuss The Girl and the Machine by Beth Revis. Yay. Yay. <laughs> At last, at last. At last. I've been waiting to read this one for like a whole year to talk about it on the show. Mm -hmm. But uh, can't get to that right now. Everyone, if you want to join in on our game later, after we're finished with the majority of the podcast stuff, everyone go grab a book right now and allow StreamYard permission so you can comment with your name. Um, that is, ooh, oh, there it is. Oh. oh, 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 wow. Yeah, oh, that's, so that's fancy. I forget how much I like StreamYard. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so great, so great. Okay. <laughs> We're so easily impressed. We are, it's sad. So, standard disclaimer if you haven't read this story, please remember that Fictional Hangover is all about spoilers. If you haven't read it and don't want to be spoiled, too bad, because we're live! <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're listening to the recording after the fact, in which case you can just stop listening to us and go read the story for free on Wattpad, then come back. If you haven't done this but want to pretend that you have, or if you don't care about spoilers, or if you just want to see what happens when we're live and you don't care about anything else, then listen up. E e e e e Why do we do this again? I don't Back, know. Right, gluttons for punishment. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. No, it, this time we did it so we could both go on vacation. That's true. That is true. Did you have a lovely time? I did. I really did. Excellent. I really, really did. It's a good time. Excellent. It was so quiet. 
<laughs> I don't understand what quiet is anymore. It was so quiet. It, like Tell it almost me made me cry. It. I know. Even just like having people next door is like, you're so loud. Stop. But, you know, compared to geese. You know, geese are fine. Did you fight geese while you were on your vacation? No, but there was a disgruntled one that kept sitting outside of our lodge for the, the duration and just looking at us and then tapping on the window and then walking away and then tapping on the window. It's good. I kept, I kept giving it the evils, but I just wouldn't get the idea. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> It's so, generated already. It has. It has. Initial thoughts. Yeah. Reduce initial thoughts. Yes. Uh, what about background info? Did we talk about background info already? No, we didn't, but I have no. background info. And it's from an interview with lightspeedmagazine.com way back in October 2011. And Beth Revis is asked by Gwenda Bond, what do you think makes YA special? And she responded, YA is special because it breaks the label. YA stands for young adult, but I think it's pretty obvious that the books aren't for young people or they're not <laughs> just for young people. And I just want to say that's true. That's why we talk about YA books all the time. They're more fun. They're less daunting. Mm. And a whole bunch of ridiculous shit happens all the time in YA books. <laughs> so that is, that's it for me. That is it for me. That's all I need. So listen to Beth Revis and read YA books, okay? I mean, listen to us too, because, you know, we tell you to listen to YA books all we the time. We have excellent recommendations. Yeah, we really do. We really, really do. So that's it. That's what I've got for, for our background info is to listen to Beth Revis because she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> Now it's time for initial thoughts. Oh, <laughs> uh, yay. And I almost talked about this a minute ago. I read this one when we were trying to find our very first story for our very first live. Oh, which was the 100th episode. Yes. And this is 140. Oh, my God. Gosh, we have so many episodes. You know, it's funny. I haven't listened to a single one of them. <laughs> I have not listened to more than I have listened now. <laughs> <laughs> you used to listen. That's all that matters. That's yes, but then I got here. abducted, so it's fine. Right, right, right. <laughs> so that was my initial thought. What's your initial thought? Um, I love sci-fi, as you know, and there's not enough good sci-fi out there I can get my teeth into. But this one does. For a short story and a Wattpad short story at that, it really, you know, ooh, I liked it. I got my, I could get my teeth into it and it was satisfying. Mm -hmm. It had a beginning, a middle and end, as all good stories should. Yes. Um, but yeah, I could really get my teeth into it. It was, a, And I always think if you can write a short story, it's a good sign for an author. Ooh, yeah, because it takes a lot. It takes a oh, lot yeah. to write a good short story. They are not an easy thing to do. So if, no. you, if you can do excellent short story, what must your back catalog B. It's pretty amazing. This yeah. one, you mentioned it being in Wattpad, and yes, that's where we found it, and that's where you can go and read it for free, but it's also published in a collection of short stories by Beth yeah. Revis. And it adds to your Goodreads tool. It does! Hey! <laughs> hey! Oh. We have two more listeners in Constance. Hi! And Hi, Annie's Constance. here. Annie, Hi, Annie! Who is tipsy? Excellent. I love it. That means just in a few hours when we're having our book club discussion, which is also happening today. Everyone join us for our book club about Vampire Academy. Annie's going to be really entertaining and I'm, I'm looking so forward. excited. I love Annie. Yeah. I love Constance. I love all our yeah. listeners. I love all of our listeners too. So are you ready to get into this story? Yes, let's see how many times you womp womp me. Uh, how many times am I going to womp womp myself? Because I'm tired, guys. I didn't get home until midnight last night, and it is only 12 o'clock today, my time. So I I need more sleep. So let's see what happens. <laughs> this is a great idea. It was not a terrible idea at all. Franklin is minding his own business, studying in the park when Heather comes up to him, excitedly introduces herself, and basically tells him his life story. Um, that is weird. 
Franklin doesn't think he's ever even seen this girl before. How does she know so much about him? Especially that. And <gasps> that is bold and italics and underlined. That is a big deal. He suggests that they go somewhere where they can be alone to talk privately without being overheard. They leave the park and enter a library greenhouse with no one else around. And Heather's demeanor immediately changes. She seems nervous now. Franklin says, it's not every day someone comes up to you and reveals your deepest, darkest secret. Heather's response, it's not every day you meet a time traveler. <gasps> what? <gasps> time yes. travel. Yes. <gasps> Heather reveals she met Franklin in his future, which is not possible. Franklin has never, ever met another time traveller, and he can't travel into the future. He can only travel through his own past. He's tried to travel into the future a lot to find out winning lottery numbers, to find out about his future self, to see how rich he is. But he's only ever been able to go back. Well, if Heather is here talking to him now, something must have changed. She says she's known him for six years and has been waiting for this day. Today is the day they change the world. Dun, dun, dun. Can I just ask, is anyone getting real shitty feelings about Franklin already? You better. Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. Spoilers. Franklin's a piece of shit. <laughs> Heather gives Franklin a plane ticket, and while they wait for their flight, she explains how they met. Franklin, when he's 38, visits Heather right after her prom, seeking her assistance. In his future, he visited her past. He didn't come as a history professor, which is what he's in college for right now, and what he's been cheating in his assignments for by traveling to important historic events and witnessed them firsthand to study. No. He's come as the world's only time traveler. Heather and tells shit bag. <laughs> that pop is back again. Ah, you really need to go to a doctor ah, about that. Ah, ah. Heather tells Franklin that he needed to help her to avoid a time travel paradox. He had to travel far enough back into her past that she was old enough to understand, but not yet old enough to make a difference. She's been studying very hard every day since he showed up until this point, and she's now a student at MIT. That's where they are heading now. Franklin sees a group of businessmen and wonders if one of them is his older self. Ooh. Ooh. Before he can decipher that, it's time to board. When they get to Heather's lab, she can give him more information on what they're going to do to change the world. But for now, he just has to come along. I don't come, know on, boy. come on, come on, come on, boy. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if I would just, oh, you're giving me a plane ticket. Okay, let's go. Ask questions, people. <laughs> Stranger danger. Stranger danger. <laughs> Franklin has never done anything momentous or world changing before. Just stuff for his own benefit. Insert Franklin is a shit bag here. But today's the day. Heather is shocked that Franklin would doubt his world-changing abilities. After all, he can travel through time. He tells her he doesn't think he's the person she met all those years ago yet, but she assures him that he is exactly the same person she met in high school. Mm. They finally arrive at Heather's lab. It's not on the MIT campus, and it's not so nice from the outside. But the inside has an apartment, lots of equipment, and a huge metal tube in the middle with a glass window, and about Franklin's face level. There are other tubes and things coming from it. Heather tells Franklin that this is the time machine. With it, and with his DNA powering it, he'll be able to travel anywhere in time Ooh. Ooh. she explains that there's a mutation in his genes that allows for time travel like x-men yeah sure sure just like x-men just exactly like the x-men exactly like like yeah franklin asks why with the machine he'll be able to travel freely through time 
Heather explains that the machine will unlock the ability in his genes to allow him to travel outside of his own timeline by pushing him around on a gurney. And though he doesn't follow, her answer is good enough for him. That answer was not good enough. It was a terrible, <laughs> terrible explanation. He also asks why she's so interested in time travel. Because, she answers, she's always been a nerd and he made a lasting impression on her. It's getting more menacing every time. <laughs> Franklin doesn't think Heather looks like a nerd. Sure, she's not hot, but she's a genius. She explains to him that when she was in high school, until her senior year, she wasn't like anyone else. She didn't like boys or girls, but studying. How do you explain to everyone that you're asexual? You don't. You can't. But then she finally got boobs and decided <laughs> to wear cuter clothes and try to fit in. She finally went to a party after prom and that's where she met Franklin and when everything changed. Oh, no. No, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. You can see what's going to happen now, can't you? It's the boobs. It's, it's the, the entrance boobs. of the boobs. Damn you, boobs! <laughs> Heather then asks what Franklin was like growing up, able to time travel, and where he would go if he could go anywhere. He'd go to see historic events like JFK's assassination, or to see if Jesus was real, or D-Day, or a slave auction. He'd also go into the future to get winning lotto numbers and to make sure he's got a big house and to mess with a guy in one of his classes. Heather asks if he's ever done that before, you know, messed with anybody. Oh, sure he has. Wouldn't you? No, you shit. People don't do that. Depends on how much of a garbage person you really are. Oh, oh, Franklin is made of garbage. I feel like we're heavily influencing people on, on, on like, you know, Franklin being a, an absolute dickwad. Well, you know, if you read the story, you picked up on it. <laughs> so Franklin messed up the star footballer players' college applications and stole video games before they came out. He was a dick. He even <laughs> messed around with the girls and then disappeared to boost his own self-confidence, you know, to be killer when he went to school the next day. Not a virgin. No. He crashed mm. a party, found a girl that was maybe a little drunk and had sex with her. Was it rape? Heather asks. Well, she didn't say no. Franklin thinks more about it. Thinks more about the girl's dead eyes and that she didn't fight or say no or say yes. But he wanted it. And there had been more girls. Yes, lots more after that first time. But as of today, he's not that guy anymore. Today is the day all that changes. <sighs> Heather asks Franklin if he's ready to try the time machine. Nervous, he steps into the machine. Heather tells him to take off his shirt because she's got to take his blood. She tells him to trust her. It won't hurt that much. He'll thank her afterward. That sounds familiar to Franklin, but then Heather shoves a huge needle into his heart. Franklin <laughs> freaks out. She said it would be simple, but she lied. <laughs> she begins to replace Franklin's blood with a cryogenic substance that will keep him alive indefinitely. It will make five years feel like five seconds. Oh. Oh. Heather explains that she would not be here without him, without the night that Franklin said those familiar words to her and took her virginity. She lied. It wasn't future Franklin that visited her asking for help. It was just asshole Franklin jumping mm. through time and assaulting women. Mm. There is no future Franklin because this, in bold, underlined, in italics, is his future. Heather's going to use his blood to travel anywhere she wants in time. That part was true at least. She's going to be a hero while he's here, strapped to her machine, nothing but a battery. Oh. oh, revenge! Oh. Revenge! <laughs> oh. oh, 
It's an excellent tale of revenge. Yes. It's quite powerful, Ooh. actually. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. So is this where we go for our usual break? So our our breaks. Our breaks. Uh yes, here we go. <laughs> If you love us, give us money! Yay! <laughs> that's, the, that's the essence of our breaks. <laughs> that's it. I'm just reading through the comments. Constance is, in capitals, RAGE! Garbage person. Colin, this guy's a total shitbag. And Richard, X-Men Days of Sex Pest Past. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. That Franklin, that Franklin man, he's shitty. Yes, and for those who have read the book, as you read uh, the, the the short story, as you're reading it, in the four parts of days, you can tell it's going to degenerate quite heavily. You're just waiting for that shoe to drop, and it's like, oh yes, I knew he was a dick. Oh, oh, but did you know he was that much of a dick? Because wow. yikes. Oh. Hang on, have we started our discussion? I think we have. Oh, do I need to turn off the message? Oh, everyone, um, give money. Love us. That's the end of the advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, standout moments, huh? Franklin's a dick. Yeah, a I, yeah. The actual when you get to it, the the bit, and you're like, yes, my my feelings of hatred towards this person is finally validated. That is a good feeling. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what he did is wrong yes in every sense of the word yes yeah but heather's yeah. retribution human battery mm. okay <laughs> does it make me a garbage person that thinks great you know i can't help but feel that you know heather slash Beth Revis, as the author, has finally found a way for scumbags to like give back to society. <laughs> Let's turn them all into human batteries. Yes. Let's yes. make use of their dis their essence. Yes. Let's take all sexual abusers and turn them into human batteries. I think that is a great plan. And you know, if we could, if we could actually hook people up like that, and uh, you know, time travel with them, they would serve a purpose. <laughs> I, need I mean, to, to be fair, it doesn't have to be time travel. That would be awesome. But, you know, just power a city. That would be fine. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I feel like we're getting into some weird, like, gritty, this... dystopian future with people hooked up to machines, like, constantly Whoa! running on treadmills. This and, is like... our fanfic, Commander. This is our fanfic. I don't want to be a part of this fanfic. We're, we're going into a dystopian bad. future. However, it's a dystopian future where everybody's like, eh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Meh. Oh. Just, just take the cryogenic goo out of them, replace the blood, put them back out. It's a, bit, it's a little bit demolition man at that point, to be fair. It is. Yeah. And I would be just... very upset if Sandra Bullock didn't come out and, you know, say, brother death kill. And show me how to use three seashells at this point. No, no. See, I was going to talk about the three seashells too, and that no one knows how to use them. It's not a thing. It's not a thing that people understand. It's the seashells. No, it's, no, it's the mystery of the universe. It is. Do you think if we were able to time travel, we would learn the secret of the seashells? No. Because it doesn't have an answer, does it? It doesn't have an answer. It is just a mystery. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yikes. Do you think if we had time travel, we'd be able to understand Wesley Snipes' hair in Demolition Man? There is because nothing wrong with his hair it's, in Demolition It's just, Man. I need to know who made the decision because it's outstanding. Like, I mean, every time I picture Wesley Snipes, I picture him in Demolition Man. Yeah. Not in or Blade? Or Tu Wong Fu. No. Wow, I'm surprised. I know. Or, you know, when he's in Tu Wong Fu, thanks for everything, Judy Newmar. Yeah. Those are all good Wesley Snipes. Those are all good. Those are all good Wesley Snipes. Yeah. Okay, we're going down the wrong rabbit hole. Again. We are going down the wrong rabbit hole. Uh, Bring yikes. Bring it back. Yes, use our time travel powers to reverse that segment. Yes. And start over again. <laughs> Done. Yes. Okay. Oh, this is a tough because one to talk about, though. You know, it because is. it's it's very heavy and it's. 
not funny. It's yikes. No, I, but I think we can talk at least about the way that it was done on, you know, how Beth Revis was able to accomplish something in such a short story. Mm-hmm. Like, I got to the fourth part and kept clicking, next part, next part. I wanted more. And then I was like, actually, you know, I'm very satisfied with where this has gone. And then I considered, do I, would I want to know more about Heather's hijinks through time? I don't know that I would because I would hate to think that Heather has turned into the scumbag. Ooh, yeah. What do you think she went to change in the past? Because if like, are we gonna are we gonna have an alternate nineteen eighty five here? Is she gonna go back and stop what happened to her after prom happening? And then if she does that, you know, that just that breaks the timeline if we're following back to the future rules. But if we if we follow the rules of paradox and if she kills Franklin any point before he can become a sexual predator, then yeah. It's a loop. It's a weird yeah, I don't think you can. But what I think she can do is use it to go back and prevent other people's. She's really taking one for the team then. Yeah, I, th- I can imagine her she's she's this is her vigilante kind of origin story she she's you know she's 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 not batman but it's the same as batman she's had something traumatic happen to her of a different degree and she's using that it quote or quote for good yeah she's yeah. not a crime fighter she is a vigilante but i can imagine she that's what she's is. doing or she might do it in other ways she, you know she wants to use it to change the world but then actually we're, we're, we're saying Heather is naturally going to be a good person. Who's to say she's going to use that power responsibly? She's got to be good. Heather can't be bad. Although Heather probably is going to end up doing something terrible. But that what that's what makes this a good story. Because, you know, yeah, Franklin is terrible. He's He's the most terrible person ever. But, you know, Heather, she's not the greatest. She's yeah, she's she she's hooked somebody up to a ba- to to a machine and she's using them as a battery. I mean, that's takes a certain certain tip on the moral compass. Yeah, it does. But what was if Heather used the time travel to go back and influence people, like influence people like Ruth Bader Ginsburg, mm. to become a Supreme Court yes. justice? Yes. You know, so she's indirectly helping and being that active feminist person rather than going for the vigilante justice she's going for the people who can actually perform lawful justice Mm, yes yes she's judge jury and executioner all on her own but without actually committing without actually yes executing anyone she's just executing her evil plans but in good ways Exactly. It could just be that she's being that you know when you know when you say, Oh, I, I read that book, I just found this book in the library and it changed my life. Mm-hmm. She's the person who put that book on the shelf. Ooh, yeah. 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 She's the person who, you know, you bump into in the street and they say that one line and you're just going, <gasps> Yeah, that person mm-hmm. that smiles at you and changes your day. That's yeah. what she's doing. She's not going out murdering people because again that's tipping the scales into an area we don't want to go to but yeah, yeah. creating a super villain yeah it's the anti-hero syndrome it you do bad to do good yeah yeah i mean you sometimes you do have to do bad things in order for great things to happen oh it's Ooh. a weird moral quandary it it's really funny. is it's a, it's it a funny end oh 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 Oof. Uh, so, who's your favorite character? Hmm. Franklin or Heather? Hmm. 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 Yikes. Can we just talk about how terrible Franklin is? Yes. Because, like, all of the things that he talked about doing, traveling through time, especially, especially when she's telling him how the time machine's going to work after, you know, it's powered with his X-Men genes. She's like, yeah, you can go anywhere. And she's pushing him around in circles on the gurney. Um, 
And he's like, yeah, I want to go back in time to watch a slave auction. Like, really? That's, that's what you want to do? In everything that you can possibly do in time, you want to see the president's head explode. You want to witness a slave auction. You want to see if Jesus is real. And you know what? I'm guessing if he picks a time to see if Jesus is real, it's probably not going to be a very pleasant time in Jesus' no. life. No. This guy is yikes. Yeah. Yeah. I yikes. mean, if he turned around and said, I want to go and see the dinosaurs, I'd be like, yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah, let's go. That. Let's go ride a dinosaur. Sure. Yeah. That's fine. But what makes like, ugh, it's just it's it's all terrible because Heather is described as a person of color. And Franklin says, I want to go watch a slave auction. He's a terrible person. He is. He's terrible. He's a terrible person and he doesn't realise that he's being a terrible person. He doesn't realise that what he is being committing is rape. Ugh. He totally did. He totally he realised it. Come on. He knew what he was doing was wrong. He just didn't label it as such. Ugh. Ugh. It, it, yeah, it, this is a really weird one to talk about. I'm really glad I read it and I'm really glad we are talking about it because it raises so many questions. Um you know, fun ones like if you were going to go back in time, what would you go? Where would you go? What would you go and see? Yeah. Um, answer in the comment. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Coral um, is here, by the way, and she says hello. Or hi, hi Coral. Yeah, um, hi, but Coral. also, it kind of like makes you question, you know, the justice system, the moral compass of people. You know, she's taken, she she's taken the justice that would not have probably happened if it went through the normal courts and that's just purely based on you know statistics in the news of people saying i have been raped and then the person being found guilty yeah so you can you, and again it's different for a woman reading it to a man who would have read it, you know, um, where they might fall on that justice system, like that scale of justice. Do you, you know, do, do you think, do you think that might have anything to do with it? I don't know. Um, I don't know that I would say that there should be a difference between uh, any gender reading this story, because you should all realize, we should all realize that Franklin is terrible and what's happening is bad. And there yeah. needs to be something that comes from it. Yeah, I think the unfortunate case is we've seen in the news, and I'm thinking of um, American Supreme Court um, appointees, where it's the boys will be boys justification. Ugh. Yeah. Well, girls will be girls and make human batteries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Colin in the comments says, hook the fucker up to the battery. So, right? Girls, yeah. will, girls will be girls and make human batteries. I think that's, I think that would, you know, a long, long time ago, we used to do life lessons. Yeah. At the end, I think that would be the life lesson. Yeah, I agree. I, mean, I agree. Yeah. yeah. So were there any surprises in the four pages of short story? Uh, that Heather figured out a way to steal Franklin's life essence to travel through time. Yeah, that girl has smarts, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. And I mean, you know, not that she just, yikes yeah because she I was surprised. Do that. yeah i was surprised that franklin didn't realize sooner that he was an absolute scumbag dick <laughs> took a while to get there yeah oh oh what constance is, is um turning <laughs> turn him into, a <laughs> into a eunuch <laughs> as well so not only is he going to be a human battery he's going to lose his bits yes he's going to be a fair enough Ballless battery. I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Oh my goodness. I think that we need to play Would You Rather because it will yeah, be a, let's little move on. Bit, <laughs> a little bit more fun. So is it time? It's time. It's, it's time. time. It's definitely time. We're moving on quickly. <laughs> it's time for Would You Rather. Hooray, hooray, hooray. So Yay. <laughs> We asked on social media if you had the time travel, 
ability. Would you travel to the past or to the future? Now, I will say the polls at time of recording live are still open um so this is a time uh, this is just a snapshot so on facebook for 86 percent said past and 14 percent said future on instagram 43 percent said past and 57 percent said future on twitter it was 62.5 percent said past and 37.5 percent future and on tiktok it was 49 percent past and 51 percent future we have comments. We do have comments. But I just want to say, we asked this question last week. So, we? yeah, because we asked our next question. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. So wah, you wah. basically lied to everyone. You basically wah, wah. lied. I don't even know what day of the week it is. To me, this should be a Thursday. It should be a Thursday, but it's not a Thursday. So, comments, right? Comments. Oh, we have comments. Yes. Evil Knight in Void on TikTok said, future so I can travel to any universe I want. I like that. I like that. They're going very far into the future. Star Trek far. Yeah, and that's fine. Yes. Constance on TikTok. <laughs> I'm not going to sing the song, but Constance quoted the song Journey to the Past from what I can only assume is Anastasia and she wants to travel to the past, but I'm not. I'm not gonna read the whole thing. But she's quoting the song. Can you rap Jared. it? No, I'm not gonna. It's not. It's not worth it. It's not good. I'm too tired for that. But I just love that Constance responds in song lyrics. So I want to put that challenge forth to Constance from now on. Only answer in song lyrics. That is your challenge. <laughs> that sucks. That Ready? sucks. No. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because I'm completely rubbish at song lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> Colin said, past please. Future leads to finding out about terrible occurrences and manners of death, which would freak me the freak out. Past leads to seeing cool events like moon landings and dinosaurs, which are both objectively awesome things. So let's do that thing where we go to the past. Yay! So, yeah! Yay! Yeah! It will no doubt have been a Kermit the Frog. Yay. Good. Uh Constance has accepted our challenge. Which oh, is important. well, well done, yeah. Constance. Oh, Coral on Facebook said, I choose past going to make the future better if I can, which is good. We can always count on Coral for a nice, like heartwarming answer. Yes. And she would make the future a better she place. She really, really, really would. Be great. Nina on Facebook said, the past for sure. Let's just say I do a few things differently if I could. Ooh, intriguing. I wonder what Nina's got going on over there. Um, PLP, no, PL Palmer one on Instagram. Oops, oops, no, no, I'm pressing the wrong button. It's sad trolls all over the place. Oh. <laughs> PL Palmer one on Instagram is traveling to the past. Real Jackson Fraud on Instagram is also traveling to the past. I got some shit to fix. Mm. Don Kurtgich on Instagram, the past for sure. And Crinoline Lefroy on Instagram. Annie, I'm sorry, I can never say your Instagram handle. <laughs> the past is so I could have tea with Jane Austen, but I definitely don't want to stay. That whole woman's rights, lack of showers, and every time you get sick, somebody wants to cut your arm and let you bleed. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, mm. and <laughs> we have had Richard in the comments say, past defo, take me back to the 90s, I want to relive Spice Mania. And I look you straight in the camera, dead in the eyes, Richard, and say, no. Why do you pick Spice no. Girls? Because he is a huge stereotype. Hmm, okay, okay. So, what do you say? He's going to zig a zig in the comments in a second, I can tell. Well, we can only hope for that. <laughs> What do There's I another say? challenge. There's another challenge, another challenge issued to a listener. <sighs> Richard, only respond with Spice Girls from now on. <laughs> he could as well. I don't doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the past. I want to see the dinosaurs. I want to meet Jane Austen. You know, I don't want to know about the future because that way leads to bad places. I don't want to know what happens to the world. I don't want to know what happens to me or family, you know, because... 
I can only imagine terrible, terrible things. I want to, you know, go and see great things. I want to go. And, I want to go to Jury Lane and full regalia and go and sit in a box and watch a show. I want to go to the past and see. A, a, a Shakespeare, a Shakespeare at the Globe, the actual Globe, but not just the recreation Globe that I've been to. I want to go to the Tower of London and see an execution. Sorry, not sorry, but it has like Anne Boleyn or something. You know, I'm not going to influence it, but you know, at least kind of want to say I've been there. Mm, okay, okay. See, I am not going to the past. I am going to the future because I do not want to create a timeline in which Biff Tannen rules the world ah bloody myth don't so, do a biff is another life lesson from today don't do a biff don't do a biff yeah i'm not i'm not gonna do it i don't i don't want to go to the past because i don't want to mess up the future <laughs> so i'll go fuck around in the future and do whatever i want and, you know who knows if that's the future that we're even gonna experience maybe me going to the future and doing that ruins it to begin with I don't know how time travel works. So I'm going to go into the future. Nobody really knows That's how time travel works. the end of that it's sentence. <laughs> okay, next question. Yikes. Next question. Would you rather travel back in time to play video games or to take a nap? This is this is more our like <laughs> This is this is more our style, video games and napping. That's the power that we choose to oh, yield. Take a nap. <laughs> I really, I really could use some sleep. Um, yeah, I could always use some sleep. I'm going to take a nap. Yeah. Yeah, okay. You know, um, I feel like if I traveled back in time to take a nap. Then I could play my video games later. I'd have time. Well, I wouldn't exactly. be as sleepy. So that's what I'm doing. I'm also going to take a nap. But you know what? <sighs> One of my childhood traumas is the fact that my mum made us get rid of our Sinclair ZX Spectrum when my brother got his Amiga. Only one console or gaming unit was allowed in the house. So I lost the Sinclair ZX Spectrum so my brother could play freaking Mortal Kombat on the Amiga and play it badly because I beat him every time I played him. So this is a childhood trauma. You can tell there's the bitterness there. So yeah. the fact I could yeah. go back in time and play on the Sinclair ZX Spectrum with its cassette tape games, that is attractive. But I'm an adult. Adults, being, being an adult is very tiring. I need the nap. I need the rest. Yeah. I like that you're choosing to travel back in time to play really old video games, too. That makes it better. Like, you're traveling very far back in. Well, if I'm going to travel back in time, I want to actually travel back to experience, you know, the 8-bit renaissance, you know, the onset of all of this. I never had a Game Boy. I never had a Super Nintendo or any of these because, like I say, my oh, mom no. said, one console in the house and my brother had the had it. So, you know, we never, I, I never experienced that. I would go around friends and play down their Super Nintendo or their Nintendos or, you know, a friend would lend me a, a Game Boy for a couple of days. So I never had any of that. So if I was going to go back in time, it would be. But again, because I didn't have it in the house, I have to go back to Sinclair's and Spectrum, which is the one time I did. Um, I would be like, this adult stranger knocking on a kid's door. Hi, eight-year-old. Um, you don't know me? Me? But can I play on your Super Nintendo? I really want to get to the end of Super Mario. It's a bit weird. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just got distracted by all of Constance's comments because they are all in song lyrics. <laughs> so That, girl, that girl's going to Google. <laughs> really good. Really oh, good. gosh. The, play, the, the playing Goldeneye. In the yeah, I know. Well. I love that Richard is going back in time to play Goldeneye. He's also going back in time to play 90s games. And I hope that he's listening to Spice Girls at the same time. He will. Good. He will. Good. Good. Looks like uh, Colin's taking a nap. Constance yeah. is <laughs> singing Metallica. <laughs> 
Oh, Next good. question. Yes. Would yes. you rather go back in time and change one thing or go forward in time to find out something big? Look, it, I'm not going back in time. I'm not I'm not biffing the situation. I'm not doing it. So I will go forward in time to find out something big. And then probably by the time I get back to my own timeline to make the big thing happen, it won't happen. But still, I'm not going back in time. I'm not doing it. Who knows but what would if happen? If you go forward in time and you get the sports almanac and then come back to your time and then start playing, the, you know, the the winning results from sports almanac. So if I bring that is that is still biffing the timeline because that's what Biff did. Yeah, but but I mean that that's not at all what I said I was going to do. I said I would go forward to see it, and then when I get back, it it wouldn't happen. So, uh, if I were to go forward in time to get the sports almanac, and then come back to my own time and create everything from there, and then I myself became Biff, well, I would be a better Biff. I wouldn't be a sleaze bag with casinos everywhere. I would do something good with my money. I would not I would not be a biff. <laughs> I would not take the sports almanac back to 1955 though. That's not a good idea. Don't do it. Do you know do you know what I would do? I'm sorry, I'm being mercenary here. I don't care. I'm going back in time. And I'm inventing YouTube or Google or Amazon. I will invent it. Will you okay. actually invent it, though? Will you learn how to invent it and do everything? Well, that you I'll need be to the do, creator. Will you just do... discover it? Just I will. Whatever's going to get gain me the most money, uh, that's what I'm going for. But you're biffing I'm, yourself. I'm biffing myself. But I'm not going to be the absolute scumbag and just keep billions and billions and billions of dollars. It, to myself i will pay off student loans just randomly okay. anonymously okay. i want to i want I, I want to be able to live a ridiculously comfortable lifestyle i want to be able to pay for my friends and families to live that ridiculously comfortable lifestyle with their own islands that's fine but i'm also going this that this, it's ridiculous amounts of money we're talking about here so i can splurge it on I mean, saying splurging on charities, splurging on paying off student debts, splurging on, you know, being able to give people, you know, a, a living wage. I kind of want to do it for good. I'm, I don't want to be a complete garbage person. I mean, okay. Okay, oh, sorry, Jeff Bezos, what, what, you lose out here. But I don't care. So I what I'm... Like I could do a better job with your money. What I'm gathering here... As the, is that we would both positively biff our own timelines. Yes. For the greater good. Yes. Okay. I will sponsor Fictional Hangover as well with my billions. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Because I've bought Waffle House as well. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and then I will fund any future things that we do with my future money. Yes. You sponsor us with your past money and I will pay for every future expense with my future money yes but Good. we'll be able to record at the same time because we can just you know hop to each other's islands to do the recording right yes yeah yes and like a few weeks ago with i have the shit storm you're going to create the islands for us and then i will power them with my electricity powers yes. we've got all of this planned out my goodness we're good we're very good we're very good at this so next good. question then <laughs> Would you rather travel through time? Oh, we're, we're leaving the story now. Would you rather travel through time in the TARDIS, the DeLorean, or the phone booth? <sighs> oh my gosh, we didn't read what, the, what comments. Oh my gosh. One. Oh my gosh. Richard said he'd go back in time and tell his 13 year old self not to go with Ginger Curtain's look. That's <laughs> terrible. And Constance is once again singing. Oh, now she's, she's on to share. I'm sorry I said what I said. I made, should be. I've it's turned Constance you. into a monster. You can't edit this out. No, nope, can't do it. Can't Where's do it. Where's the sirens when you need it? Oh, I don't know. Anywho, TARDIS, Here DeLorean, or phone booth? Yeah, what are you picking? I feel like the, Brit the, the excessively British in me should go with the TARDIS. 
Yeah. However, I mean, you've got more room with the TARDIS. <laughs> you've but... got like an infinite amount of space in the TARDIS. Exactly, exactly. But there's something appealing about the DeLorean or the phone booth. Mm, yeah. I'm thinking DeLorean. <sighs> you know, I think I will go with the phone booth because... You could fix the phone booth with like chewing gum. And, you know, what does it take to fix the DeLorean? I've never watched really any Doctor Who, so I don't know what happens with the TARDIS. But, um, you know, fixing the DeLorean is rough. When it gets shot by an arrow in the wild true. west, like you had to push it with a train. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I'm going to change my answer. I'm going to have to so, go excessively British and go with TARDIS. Okay. I mean, it's alien technology is going to be hell of a difficult to break, but the Doctor knows people. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go British. Okay, go well, TARDIS. you know, normally I would go Back to the Future, but I'm going to have to go Bill and Ted this time, and I'm going to have to use the phone booth. <laughs> and so is Constance. What is this song lyric? I'm in a payphone trying to call home all of my change I spend for you. So I have great. no idea. I am um, useless at music. Why did you do this? I don't know. Richard says TARDIS so I can travel with Billy Piper and ask her to revisit her underrated music career. Richard. <laughs> Colin says TARDIS. Trust me, I'm the doctor. It's the best option. Colin. <laughs> oh my gosh okay last question last question would you rather travel through time with a who companion doc brown or rufus okay now see here here is where i am going back to the future i'm gonna go with doc brown because he's a mad scientist and he created the delorean i mean he didn't create the delorean but he created time travel by hitting his head on the toilet. So who knows what he could come up with to do. So that's true. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with the mad scientist. I'm going to go with Rufus. Yeah. Because George Carlin is hella funny. And yeah. I just, I, I just need that in my life. I just need the. So is Christopher Lloyd. Well, yes, but also, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, something majestic in his his prose so i'm gonna go with rufus plus okay. I mean, fashion icon i mean doc brown um excuse me when he went into the future and he came back wearing that clear tie i've wanted a clear tie ever since well okay i will grant you the clear tie but i'm sorry but rufus with his glasses and those shoulder pads um, hello doc brown hello. had some good glasses too driving the DeLorean, the great big silver, like... I had yeah. some very similar to that. Very similar. But yeah, okay. I'm glad that that's, like, we're choosing our companions based on their futuristic outfits. <laughs> what is your future fashion choices? This is important. <laughs> what do I need to wear in the future? Plastic ties? Get a skin replacement? Yes, doing it, doing it. <laughs> and then you peel off your face and you look exactly the same underneath. Nice. Oh, Doc Brown. Oh, Doc Brown. Well, Colin is joining you with Doc Brown because he likes his Good. hair. And Good. Richard, who companion? You want to know why? Because I want to. Because I want to. Good. Good. I'm both proud and upset by that. <laughs> hmm. Damn you, Billy Piper. Oh, God. Constance, no, I'm not. I'm not reading that out. <laughs> I already lack dignity. It's fine. It's fine. It's just. It's just proof that she's on my side because I'm just going to say that she's picking Doc Brown because of all of the doctors in the in that song lyric. So. Yeah, but that's also proof that she could be picking the Who companion. No, because Doctor, Doctor, no. Doctor. No, she can't physically speak up for herself right now. So I'm choosing her answer for her. <laughs> <gasps> Shocking. Shocking. I know. I know. Shocking. 
I know, I'm so shocked. Be bad. <laughs> oh, favorite final thought quote? Is that where we are now? Favorite yeah. final thought quote? It's only a four-page short story. I haven't got the millions I usually pluck out. I've got I know. One. I know. It's I've shocking. I also only have one. Cool. We normally have at least six. I know. <laughs> well, to be fair, when we have more than that, we end up having cut them down. <laughs> Can't sure. that one out. No. Who? Okay, I'm going with today's the day when everything changes, Heather said. Today's the day we change the world. Mm, it's a good one. What have you got? I'm also going with a Heather quote. All I'm going to take from you now is your time. <gasps> oh, and it doesn't sound bad when you take it out of context, but it's so bad in the story and it's perfect. Perfect. Yes. So, so good. Oh, okay. Now it's time for if you liked this, try this. <laughs> that one's really loud for some reason when I play it not you know adding it in to my editing file really loud <laughs> so what are you going to suggest oh uh, well I've, I'm very sure I've already suggested this at one point but it's my favourite time travel series so you're getting it again and it's the Chronicles of St Mary's series and the first book is called Just One Damn Thing After Another and it's by Jodie Taylor and I will point out there is a historical seamstress in here. She will make perfect recreations of any and all outfits, historically accurate, but you'll use modern materials where necessary, like Kevlar, because they get shot at. Excellent. Excellent. And she's great because she um, uh, led a rebellion. Good. Yes. Good. Anywho, and the summary is from uh, Goodreads. Okay. Behind the seemingly innocuous facade of St Mary's, a different kind of historical research is taking place. They don't do time travel. They investigate major historical events in contemporary time. Maintaining the appearance of harmless eccentrics is not always within their power, especially given their propensity for causing loud explosions when things get too quiet. Meet the disaster magnets of St Mary's Institute of Historical Research as they ricochet around history. Their aim is to observe and document, to try and find the answers to many of history's unanswered questions and not to die in the process. But one wrong move and history will fight back to the death. Mm -hmm. And as soon they discover it's not just history they're fighting... Follow the catastrophe curve from 11th century London to World War I and from the Cretaceous period to the destruction of the Great Library at Alexandria. For wherever history historians go, chaos is sure to follow in their wake. I just read book 12 and there are many short stories. Wonderful. All available on Audible as well. Some of them are exclusives. And Zara Ram is the audiobook narrator and she does a, a stellar job throughout. It's absolutely excellent. It is excessively British. They drink a lot of tea. It's important though. Very important. But I highly, highly recommend it. Yeah, it's really good. Really, really good. What's yours? Mine is called A Long, Long Sleep by Anna Sheehan. And I chose this one because I read it at this, like right around the same time that I read another one of Beth Revis's books across the universe. And it kind of gave me, kind of gave me some time vibes. Okay. This summary is also from Goodreads. It should have been a short suspended animation sleep, but this time Rose wakes up to find her past is long gone and her future Full of peril. Rosalinda Fitzroy has been asleep for 62 years when she is woken by a kiss. Oh. Locked away in a chemically induced slumber of a stasis tube in a forgotten sub basement, 16 year old Rose slept straight through the dark times that killed millions and utterly changed the world she knew. Now, her parents and her first love are long gone, and Rose, hailed upon her awakening as the long-lost heir to an interplanetary empire, 
is thrust alone into a future which she is viewed as either a freak or a threat. Desperate to put the past behind her and adapt to her new world, Rose finds herself drawn to the boy who kissed her awake, hoping that he can help her to start fresh. But when a deadly danger jeopardizes her fragile new existence, Rose must face the ghosts of her past with open eyes or be left without any future at all. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It was a good story. I like cool. it. Yeah. Is that it? Oh, is that it? Is that all? Is that all we have? Um, you know what I think we should do? It is alive. Yes, it is alive. But, and we are, of course, going to play our game. But I feel like we should go ahead and wrap up the show. And you know what I'm going to do? I am going to edit it. I am going to edit it a little bit. I'm going to edit out the game because no one wants to listen to us rifle through pages for one minute at a time. Okay. So that's it for this live episode of Fictional Hangover. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire. Join us next time as we discuss Going Bovine by Libba Bray. Look out for our Would You Rather polls on social media. Don't forget about our book club and monthly challenges on Facebook. Be sure to visit our shop on Redbubble at fictionalhangover.redbubble.com for all your favorite fictional hangover themed merchandise and become a patron of ours on Patreon at patreon.com slash fictionalhangover. Until next time, the only fictional hangover another You can find us at fictionalhangover.com. Follow us on Instagram at fictionalhangover. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash fictionalhangover. And on Twitter at fictionalhangover, no E-R. If you like this episode, check out our others. And be sure to rate and review and subscribe so you don't miss out. Special thanks to Liz Emerson for our music. You can find her on Facebook and Patreon. And an extra special thanks to Stephanie Creations for our live artwork. You can buy her artwork on Redbubble and Etsy. Thanks for listening. Yay! Yay! Excellent. I'm so Excellent. glad we actually say that like in one go on the lives because it doesn't happen in the recordings. No. Do you remember that one time when we made the recording and <laughs> it took you like 20 minutes to read your paragraph? It was good times. It was good times. I made so many mistakes and I had to turn my camera off so I couldn't see you anymore. It was good. It was a really good time. I enjoyed it. So the game. Yes, we are going to play our game. I'm here for the game, not for the discussion. You're not here for the discussion. That's that's <laughs> nice. That's really nice. Uh, so everyone, go and grab your books. And I am going to remember how to share this video. With I picked everyone. four books, and each one has a different reason for it. I picked three books, and they so, also had reasons. I picked Mina and the Undead because we talked about it on the short, and it's very good. And Amy McCall is a stellar person, and we've adopted her into our family. And I've picked Last One to Die by Cynthia Murphy, which we are going to cover. And Cynthia Murphy should be on the short, and we are probably going to adopt her into our family. Yes. And Vampire Academy because, of course... It's because our ongoing of series of conversations. Next month is the last episode of the main series before we start oh. Bloodline. So I have the 10th anniversary edition of Vampire Academy. So, of course. And because I keep recommending it and talking about it, so I have to cover it. I've got Rat Queens, which is a graphic novel, and it's my wild card, which has not been on and will not be on because it's not why. <laughs> Oh, good. Oh, that's good. Okay, let's see <laughs> if Amanda can share a screen, but keep me and Claire uh, there as well. Let's see what happens. We'll share this. Oh, oh, oh.
That looks oh, excellent. Hey, hey. There it is. Woo. I assume that we're still on the screen. I don't know what it looks like for everyone. All I, I can it's see. It's working. It's working. It's working. If Good, I was in the, if I was actively in the comments, I would put a round of applause just for you. Thank in fact, you. I, I probably still I probably you. can. Hey, guess what I can do? Hey. 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 Yeah. There we go. Round of applause. I, I gotta use those extra sound effects. For You've got them for a reason. I've got them for a reason. Okay. So my precarious balancing though has been ruined. There we are. Books, books, books. What books did you pick? I chose Harrow Lake. Perfect. By Kat Ellis. I chose Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. And I chose Eye of the Shitstorm by Jackson Ford. You can't Perfect. not choose a Tegan Frost book because they're full of fantastic quotes. Well, yes, exactly. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't because I knew you would go for a, a, a I, Jackson Ford. I know. Um, I'm sorry. I love him. No, too. no, it's fine. It's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad I suggested we read um, Girl Who Could Move Shit With Her Mind. And actually, it's Colin's fault that we read it as well because he's the one who picked it up in the bookshop and said, this looks good. And I went, yes, yes, it does. Great. So, <laughs> there we go. Great. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Great. But Jackson Ford's a fantastic person. Go and listen to the interview episodes. They're very, very good. Very yeah, good. really. Yeah, really. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, so are we ready to play? I think we are. And everything's still working properly? Yes, I'm looking at it. It's all groovy. Good. Okay, everyone grab your book and let's begin. Do we remember the rules? Grab a yes. book. Yes. Study the prompt. Search your book for sequential text to match the prompt. Everyone has one minute to find their answer. And then we're going to take turns sharing answers when it's time. Right? And no doubt people in the comments will win again because you always do. Yeah. yeah. I'm resigned to this. All right. Here's the first one. A reaction to discovering treasure. A reaction to discovering treasure. Oh, and look, there's our little timer going down. I'm so proud of my little timer. It's not on our screen. It's not live. It's not on the on the screen, just so you know. It's still on the PowerPoint screen, not full screen. Well, that's interesting. Can I stop sharing and try again? Can yeah, because it gives it me now? more time to... Ahaha! <laughs> Aha, you're funny. That's interesting that it won't uh, that it won't show what it looks like. What does it look like now? What does it look like now, Claire? Does it just say us. time's up? Just us. Just us? Cool! I love it when things work well. That's probably the most appropriate one pop we've ever had. I think that it is. How's that? Can you see? Can it says you see time's it up. Okay, well, then we won't put it in full screen anymore. So you can see all of my fantastic PowerPoint things that are going on. It's fine. It's fine. It wouldn't be alive without something. It really wouldn't. It really would not be alive. So I've does everyone? Mine. Does I've everyone got mine. One? You've got one. I've got one too. What's yours? What's your reaction to discovering treasure, Claire? I'm sorry, I'm just reading the comments. Mine is holy smokies! That's a lot of gold, old lady Birdnet. 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 Didn't say it right. Holy smokies! That's a lot of gold, old lady Birdnet. That is great. I I kind of wanted to sad trombone you, but I chose not to. Thank you. Yeah. Mine is fried chicken for everyone. <laughs> I want some fried chicken now. Mm. Well, if I find buried treasure, that's what you get. That's, that's what true. you get. Colin says, it's big, said Tonka. <laughs> <laughs> and Richard said, two pies, I said, and cake and donuts and all the bad foods. It's excellent. Excellent. 
And Constance says, I look over each every, bleh, I womp womp. I look over every inch, wondering yeah. if maybe I should try wiping at the blackness to see the face underneath. That's dark. Oh, that That's is so dark. dark. I try not to go dark. dark. I try not to go dark with mine. Yeah, I try I I try levity. Ooh. Ooh. I kind of like Richard's two pies and cake and donuts and all the bad foods. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good too. Probably I like because that. I want cake. Mm, yeah, but also mine's good because fried chicken. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, but cake. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Cake <laughs> and fried chicken are both good. Not together because that's just nasty. Is it? You don't eat like cake as a dessert? You don't have to eat them both in the same mouthful. Fried chickens and, and with cake at the same time is nasty. Like separate, separate parts of the meal at all. I'm yeah. judging you. I'm judging you. I'm not Scottish. I don't deep fry everything. Mm. <laughs> all right. Let's move on to our next one. A name for a cat. A cat, a cat, a cat, you say. A name for a cat. That being a talk by books. A name for a cat. Ah. Hmm. I already have mine. Mine uh mine is the whole reason why I chose one book. <laughs> I know it's kind of cheating that we know the questions in advance, but you know what? Deal with it. Deal <laughs> with it. Okay, okay, okay. Time's up. Oh, yeah. look, time's up. I'm so sad that we can't watch my little timer go down. So proud about my little timer. Name for a cat. What's your name for a cat, Claire? Asshole Troll. Good. <laughs> Asshole is a great name for a cat. That's very good. Without being a cat owner, it feels appropriate. Mm. What have you got? Uh, Mr. Jitters. <laughs> just Mr. Jitters in general. Oh, shock. Are you using Harrow Lake? I am using Harrow Lake. Mr. Jitters is an excellent name for a cat. It really especially is. if it's a lady cat. Because it would just be funnier that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we've got in the comments. Let's have a look. Colin says a big bosom always gets a laugh. Okay. Uh, Richard, Arto Dog 2, only a dog in my book. Sorry. And Constance looks more like Boga Yellow to me. Ew. Yikes. Oh. 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 Okay. Mm. I'm just going to pick my own then. I'm picking Mr. I'm picking my own. Then. I'm picking my own. Asshole Trolls. Perfect name for a cat. <laughs> Next question. Next question. Let's try a different book. Ah. A, a bit of bad news. A bit of bad news. A bit of bad news. I'm going to go for one I haven't read yet. Okay. Last one to die. Let's have a look. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh. Oh no. There's two. That's really good here. Hmm. You know what I'm gonna do? Declare that time's up. Can I give you two from the same page? Sure. So the first one is my chips threatened to make a reappearance. Mm, that is a bit of bad But news. The, the one I'm thinking I might go with is it's hair, all of it. It's plaited and woven, weaved into pictures and decorations. Shades of brown and yellowed blonde, faded red. It's all human hair taken from people who have died. Dead Ooh. people hair. Ooh. Which makes me want to read all of The Last One to Die just from that bit alone because that's oh. freaky. Well, it's a good thing we're covering it soon. So that's good. Yeah. 
<laughs> what have you got? Um, mine is, I may express a desire to punch you in the dick. That goes perfectly with collars. Women can get beaten for that sort of thing. Oh, oh, that that is a bit of bad news. Mm. Constance, mm. what are you cooking up here, Stace? Oh, the excrement, excrement. Uh, ew, that is definitely bad news. Ew, excrement. No, thank you. Okay, I think Constance has won that one. Oh, ew. no, we've got one. We've got one from Richard. That was the moment a little kid opened the plastic egg she'd got, she just got off the golden goose and screamed as a half decomposed mouse and a load of hypodermic needles fell out of it. Bloody hell, what are you reading? Oh, they are tie. You, with R2 Dog 2 and, and golden geese with hypodermic needles. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> all right. Next one a message in a bottle. A message in a bottle. Back to song lyrics again, aren't we? Yes, we could be. Oh, I've got to go for that. I mean, you can't put something in all caps and not go for it. <laughs> Alex in Wonderland. It's YA Honest. Richard, honestly, that would make a change because I, I tend not to go for Y. <laughs> Don't make me kick you off the podcast. Because you need to read only YA all the time. You <gasps> 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 can't read it's Jackson a, Ford then. It's new adult. Mm -hmm. She's uh -huh. 23. That's new adult. In America, maybe. I think just based on age in general, that's a new adult. 23 is a new adult. So, time's up. Message in a bottle. London lunatic on the loose. <laughs> that, would be, that would be terrible to get because when did it happen? Is exactly. it happening right now? Exactly. <laughs> it's terrible. Exactly. Is it right now? Is it 100 years ago? What's going on? Is can they not the communicate future? that the only way they can do it is through a message in a bottle? Oh, <gasps> oh, so oh. many questions. So terrible, many questions. terrible. Uh, mine is, where the hell is my bag? <laughs> <laughs> Which would be great if you're on a deserted island and you get that in a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Richard says, no fries? Oh, that would oh. be sad. It's like you're sending the bottle back to like your fast food order and like Uber Eats. Send me my my, my rice. Colin oh. is just bugger. And Constance, I just took a sponge bath. <laughs> I quite like Collins for that one. Just a message in a bottle and all of says bugger. It's like, yeah, okay. So we need more context for this, but it's just it's precious just as it is. Just one yeah. word. <laughs> I like the odd announcement of sponge baths. Yeah, what are people? We know what Richard's reading. What's what's everybody else reading? Or oh, grabbed? Keep it sensible, people. Next question. Next Come question. On. Something. Run a roll. Run a roll. Something you'll lie awake thinking about tonight. Let's go for some Mina and the Undead. Oh, nice. Nice. I am going to Midnight Sun with this one. Ooh. Oh, Jay Cable's voice. I know. That's what you're going to lie awake thinking about tonight is Jay Cable's voice. I need to find the line here that says Jay Cable's voice, but unfortunately, I know for a fact it's not in here. I know. I feel like the next time we play this game, we should play it with using old episodes of the podcast. <laughs> and use our terrible old comments and quotes and things. I think it would be a great idea. That's a perfect idea. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a perfect idea. Okay, I've got one. Me too. I had to find this one on purpose because it's the first thing I thought of. What's yours? It had a touch of Gary Oldman's Dracula. 
<laughs> oh, and then you can think of me. <laughs> it is highly accurate, to be fair. I do lie awake at night going, why? <laughs> hmm. Especially since I've recently rewatched it. What mm. have you got? I have Emmett flipped the gaudy STI into oncoming traffic. Why? <laughs> Why, <laughs> Emmett? Why <laughs> did you do that? that oh, oh, this is this is just we're just going back to this episode discussion again. We're just digging it up. Uh, just why? Let's why? Have a look. <laughs> so Colin's reading Monstrous Regiment by Terry Pratchett. You could always rely on a Terry Pratchett book. And his response to this one is loosen his loosen his gag perks. <laughs> okay. Okay. And Constance is reading Blue is for Nightmares. I was going to pick that one as the book that we we're going to read in the future, but I thought oh, I'll opt against it and go for something that I know a little bit better. Because I flicked through it more. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, and her response is whipping a Scooby Doo slipper at Amber's head. <laughs> I know people who would agree with that and say, yes, that is highly accurate. It's very good. I can't wait till we read that one. <laughs> I'm such a dainty eater. <laughs> what the frick? <laughs> Constance is selling this book just through the courts. This is amazing. Uh, to be fair, Alex in Wonderland is also being sold through the courts as well. <laughs> oh, very good. Do we have any more? We have some more questions we could do, yes. But I just noticed that I've done them somehow out of order because we haven't done strange first words for a child, have we? So let's go to that one. Strange first words for a child. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, you know, if I could have shown this lovely PowerPoint presentation properly, I would not have accidentally skipped questions. Sorry, everyone. Oh, you got to go back to Eye of the Shitstorm for this one. <laughs> if it's not, you know, hyper violence or curse words, it's not. You really see, I purposely picked word. volume one of um, Rat Queens for the for the lack of curse words. I would have gone for a later volume for the style of cursing quotes. So, what did you pick? I picked. In response to strange first words for a child, I'm going to wash the gore off. Don't bite her. Ew. I chose. Renesme. But, it is. Uh, it is. It is a little bit Renesme ish. I'm sorry, not sorry. Uh, I chose. Touch him and I'll tear your face off. <laughs> I would love to hear a baby say that. I don't know about anyone else. Oh, uh, I could probably get a six year old to do it. Uh, not a baby though, so it's not the same. Missed those important. You really years. did. You really, really did. Sorry. Colin says, I do have a petticoat in my pack, sir. Good. And That's Richard good. said, He could be by. <laughs> could be. <laughs> um let's see. Shall we go on to another question? Yeah, go for it. A statement likely to be challenged if presented as fact. Okay. Right, I haven't touched Vampire Academy yet, so let's go for that one. I'm just I'm just gonna stick with Eye of the Shitstorm. Just gonna, gonna ride out the rest of the shitstorm here. Shit storm. Shit storm. Storm or oh shit. No. We don't have that many more questions, so maybe I won't. Maybe I won't stick with this one the rest of the time. After this okay, one, I'm just going to go for that one. Okay, what do you got? Oh, yuck! Just read Constance's, and I'm hope, hope I don't know which one it's for. 
<laughs> okay. Um, for what's what's this one? That's this one. This one. A one. statement likely to be challenged if presented as fact. I'm stunningly sexy, but not pretty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hmm. I like it. It makes you think. Mm. What do you got? Bradley Cooper crawls into Leo's lap for a cuddle. <laughs> it works better when you don't know who Bradley Cooper is as well. It works better when you think it's actually Bradley Cooper doing it. Yes. Doing the cuddling. <laughs> Richard's put, listen, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> Constance has put, bad nacho dip. And I don't know which one this is for from Constance. If it was for the last one or this one, but Madame Discharge. Oh. Ew. 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 And Colin has said, I told you, lads, you don't know nothing about war. Oh. Oh. Do we Ew. have time for one more? Yeah, I think we could do two more because that's all we have left. We just have okay. two more that we've chosen. A line that's sarcastic when you replace a name with Captain Obvious. Oh god. This one feels like it should be easy, but I, no. It's it's not. I don't think it's I I don't know. Do I have to replace somebody's name with Captain Obvious as well? Yeah, yeah, you do. Oh, shoot. I struggle with this. I struggle with this one. Okay. You know, mine, <laughs> the, what I pick, you also have to change your tone of voice when saying it. Because if you don't. If you say it in Jake Abel's voice, it would never be sarcastic. Oh, it would just be sexy. It would be. But not pretty. Or whatever <laughs> your quote was, is it going to go? I'm, I'm going to go for this one, but it's not very good. I, I'm struggling with this one. Okay. And I, I found one vaguely appropriate. It was a weird word choice, but that didn't necessarily mean Anna and Captain Obvious were ripping each other's clothes off. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I replaced Vladimir. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, because you have Captain Obviously. Captain Obviously. Thank obviously. you very much. Indeed. Indeed. Okay. Um, I chose, thank you, Captain Obvious. I responded quickly. And a Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> <laughs> We're thanking people for Christmas or okay. Captain Obvious. Or Captain. Let's have a look at the comments. Uh, we won't be sent to the cells, Tonka shouted. That's from Colin. A speck of peppermint sponge landing against Dre's cheek. This is getting confusing now because I'm not sure if they're from the other ones or the new one. Oh, Madam Discharge and Bad Natural Dip was for baby words. Oh. I mean, oh. It, regardless, it's just nasty. Oh. Oh. It's just nasty. Ooh. 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 Let's do the last one. Let's do the last one. The moral of the story is... The moral. I'm going to go back to Rat Queens for this one because it's usually good for morals. Yeah. <laughs> or not morals. Let's put you puppies back. I, I'm going with Hero Lake. The moral of the story is don't go back to your childhood home. That is a great moral. A -F. The moral of the story is don't stab your father. Don't throw a woman in a hole. Spoiler alert! Hmm. 
Have you chosen something? No. Okay. Right. Okay. I'm just going to go for this one. Okay. Time's up. You know, that used to be true. Now you're more dangerous than the monsters. Oh. Ooh. More dangerous than the monster is a good moral of a story. Um, I am going to say the moral of the story is... <gasps> I found a better one. Yeah. Mm. Wouldn't want to tangle with a coyote. <laughs> can I give you my better one? Which is, sure. It's on the same page. Yes. We can sit around and bitch or we can make some monsters bleed. And my mm. sword is hungry for blood. Oh, that's good. I mean, I don't know if it compares with tangling with a coyote, but it's pretty Hungry. good. So pretty good. It's good. Pretty good. It's good. It's good. Pretty good. It's good. What have we got? Okay, Richard. And then he licked the machine with his tongue. Mmm. Have a care, I said. It's from Colin. And is your father, Captain... Oh, no, this is from Constance from the previous one. Is your father, Captain Obvious, that hard up... Uh, that hard up that he has to resort to keep to, into peeping into windows of teenage girls. Constance, man, what are you making us read? Oh, I'm excited for it. She mm. knows what we like. She does. It'll be a good pick. Is that it? Is that it? Is that it? Unless we have some more responses coming through. We might have some more responses come through in a little bit. But I have ended the slideshow. Oh, my screen. sad slideshow. Oh, because it didn't work. So sad. So sad. Moral of the story is slideshows suck. Yep. Unless they're used to stop explosions. Yes. Oh, or to God, that propose so funny. dates. Yes, that PowerPoint yeah. presentation in, what was it called? Beauty Queens? Beauty Queens, that's right. Save the world through PowerPoint presentation. Save the world with Including the PowerPoint. Including animations. Yes, yes indeed. Very good, very good. So glad that we're reading another Libba Bray soon. Next, as Next. a matter of fact, will be very good. Going bovine, yes. Yes, all right. Is that it? Is I think that that's it? it? I think that's it. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. Yes. I feel oh. weird. We're not doing the outro. I'm, I'm freaking out. It's like, well, this is odd. This is peculiar. What's going on? Do you, do you want to do it? That's it for this episode of Fictional Hangover. I'm Amanda. I'm Claire. And we've already done this. So, everyone, please thanks see for previous. Watching. Please, <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll do this again eventually. One day? One day? Next time we're going on a day? Yes! Ooh, <laughs> let's plan a vacation just so we can go live. <laughs> it, it'll be the Vegas trip. The Vegas, Vegas trip. baby! Yeah! Woo! Woo! All right, bye everyone! Bye!